Hello everyone, welcome. Well, it's another day in the studio and um, what I've actually got to do right now is um, mix up some glaze. So why don't we go over to where we mix up the glaze and um, and we can talk about talk about that so I'll just take the camera back a bit yeah so well the temperature is warming up in here a little bit um, just wanted to talk a little bit about mixing glaze and and uh, you know I know a lot of a lot of people they mix you mix up your own glaze. You, sorry, you you buy your glazes, don't you? And uh, it's actually much better to mix up your own, and you save yourself a lot of money. So I'm just going to run through what what you're going to need to um, to mix up your own glazes. And for that, maybe we will come a little, just a little closer. So as you can see there on the bench. I have got, um, you're going to need a couple of these buckets, all right, so get yourself a couple of buckets, you're going to need a sieve, you're going to need a, a container such as this, you're going to need a uh, a balance, a weighing balance. I use a smaller scoop. This I use as a scoop to scoop out. You're going to need your your glaze recipe, and you're going to need a pencil because as you're going to put these ingredients into the bucket, you're going to tick them off one by one as they go into the bucket. Not until, I might add. Let me just show you here underneath my glaze bench, down there on the floor you'll see I've got more buckets which where, where I keep my raw materials you see and I write right on the lid what it is and also write on the bucket what it is. So this is whiting and I have it written in two places on the bucket and on the on the lid and this is here this spodumene and it's written there and it's written there and this is whiting and it's not written on the lid and it should be I've got a note inside here saying whiting but Actually, I've got another one for whiting somewhere, I think. Yeah, here, this one. So, again, this one is EPK. Well, you might, you might think, well, why is he talking about that? You know, well, uh, get on with it. We don't want to hear about your buckets. We want to hear, know about how to make the glaze up. But I'm just trying to tell you, you know, that there's... It's very important to know what your raw materials are and it's very important that they are clearly marked. Trust me. <laughs> it is important. <laughs> and um, I am one who has made many mistakes mixing up glazes because I got confused about the glaze uh, ingredients or the bucket or so on. In fact, in fact, you know why? You know why I'm making this glaze up now? 
That's because I made a complete hash of making it up before in this bucket here. In fact, I had half a bucket of Temaku glaze there, and I, I thought I'll just make up a half a batch and add it to the bucket to make it up to a, a bigger bucket, you know, a larger bucket full. But the second, the second batch that I added, I, some, somewhere along the, the line, I got confused with the ingredients, and um, I put the, I, I did the recipe wrong. So when, when, the, when the pots came out of the kiln, the tembuku was not as, as it ought to be. So, <laughs> today I'm remaking that tembuku glaze because I made a mistake, all right? It was not the first time I've made a mistake, I tell you. It's very, very easy to make a mistake when you are mixing up a glaze. That, therefore, therefore. Okay, so, this recipe is, uh, in fact, this recipe is not one of mine. It's one I got, actually, from my brother, Jeremy, in England. And he, he calls it Mrs. Newton's Temaku. And he swears it is better than, it's better than father's Temaku that we used to use at home in the, in the studio, you see. So, yeah, he, he reckons it's better. So, we're going to start. So, how do you how do you mix up a glaze? How what do you do? You know, how do you? Okay. Well, the, the important thing is number one, make sure you've got the right recipe written down on the paper, and double check it against the your, your original in the book or if you've got it off the internet, just double check it and just make sure you've got the quantities exactly right. That's the first thing, all right? That's the first safeguard. The second is, as I said before, make sure when you mix it, when you add the ingredient to the bucket, you tick it, you tick it off. All right, so this is Mrs. Newton's Temaku, and so we're gonna need here, it says five pounds, six ounces of Feldspar. So, I'm going to look for my felspar, and here's my felspar, okay, we're going to turn on our, our balance, and with these kind of digital balances, you know, you can turn them on, and then you can put the the container on top there and then and then zero it so we're going to need five pounds and six ounces now many of you probably are thinking to yourself well Simon you shouldn't be doing this without wearing a mask <laughs> and you're right I should I should be I should be wearing a mask but for the purpose of doing a video clip, I cannot explain anything with a mask. So I'm just going to be I'm just going to be careful, okay? And try not to make too much dust. You know, you can use your common sense. By the way that you you dump the glaze into the bucket or into here, you don't make clouds of dust, you see. <laughs> like I did there. So I want five pounds and six ounces. Actually. I just, I'm just, I'm just thinking the uh, these scales actually. These scales um, are in pounds, so it gives me like point. So I need to know what. 
We we'll have to do a little calculation here because because five pounds. So what I'm going to need to do is write if to convert it all into ounces. You see, and that's actually the best way of doing it, perhaps, or at least it's going to be easier for me. So I'm going to go five times five times sixteen. So uh, six five is a thirty. Once five is five. Six seven eight. That's eighty ounces plus the six, five pounds, six ounces, plus the six, so that's 86 ounces, you see? Okay, I'm now gonna actually convert this, this thing back to, back to ounces. Okay, I've got 82, eighty-six ounces. Okay, I've got the 86 ounces. Okay, now we're gonna put the 86 ounces of Felspar carefully in the bucket and I put it into the bucket so the next thing I've got to do I've got to tick it off the list you see <laughs> very high tech okay I can now dispense with the felspar put that back underneath are we in the picture are we in the picture oh, not really quite in the picture are we well okay there you go. So, next. What have we next? China clay. EPK. Come my way. Here's the EPK. You see? So, what we need now is one pound eight ounces. Okay, I'm going to try and keep the dust down. One pound is 16 ounces, 16 ounces plus eight, plus eight, uh, 16 plus eight is 24, isn't it? So that's 24 ounces we're gonna need. Now, for those of you who's, who, who are, are scared to make up your own glazes, what what is different about this than if you were in the kitchen, mixing up ingredients for a recipe, okay? So now I'm gonna put in the china clay, and, and we're gonna tick him off, you see? Right. China clay, put the china clay out of the way. The next thing we're looking for is whiting. Whiting. Who knows what whiting is? Whiting is calcium carbonate. So, whiting. You see, it's just a case of being methodical, isn't it? Okay, I need one pound 12 ounces. So that's one pound, so that's 16 plus 12 is uh, 28. Right, 28. 28 ounces of whiting, please. Not very frightening is whitening, whiting. <laughs> oh, I put in too much. 28 ounces of whiting. There it is. 28 ounces of whiting. Into the bucket. Okay, let's, let's tick him off. Now we've got Zinc oxide. Now I've got a very small packet here of zinc oxide, okay? And we're going to need four ounces. Well, that's not a big deal, is it? Four ounces. Dee, 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 dee. So I want to encourage you to mix your own glaze. too much there. La, 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 la. Three. Oh, there 
there they are, four ounces. It's just a small amount, you see. So four ounces, carefully, in the bucket. And we're going to tick him off. Tick him off. Right, next we've got flint. Flint. When I was at school, when I was at school, I went to a, like a boarding school, you know. We were very bored. <laughs> but I remember we were, I was quite young then, you know, I was about nine. And, um, and all, the, all of the masters of the school had, had nicknames, you know. So anyway, the headmaster was called Flint. He was called Flint, you see. So whenever I'm mixing up a glaze and I'm, I, I, I'm putting in Flint, I think of my old school headmaster. Mr. Upward, he was called. Mr. Upward. <laughs> Not downward, but upward. A good name, isn't it, for a headmaster? Okay, so we've done the flint. Now let's move on. Uh, let's see, two flint. So two pounds eight ounces. Where's the flint? Flint. So that's the flint there. You see. So we've got two pounds and eight ounces. So what's that? Let's see. Two pounds is two sixteens of thirty-two. Uh, 32 plus 8, that's 40, isn't it? Yeah. I was never very good at maths, you see, really, you see. <laughs> never liked maths. Never liked numbers that much, but anyway. They're very logical math numbers, aren't they? They, ne they don't lie. Okay, so we want 40 ounces. We're just going to... Carefully put the 40 ounces in there. Dee -dee 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 -dee. You see, this is the this is the ABC of mixing a glaze. You see, in it, it's this is the ABC of mixing a glaze. So there it is, the flint. In with the flint. Okay, we're going to tick him off the list. Ha ha! Now we have the last ingredient, which is over there. And um, so I'm going to... It's a bit of a big bag. I didn't bring it here. It's red, red iron oxide, and I just need... I only need uh, 12 ounces of that. So I'm going to, I'm going to get some of it in, a, in this container, you see. I'm going to go over here. You won't be able to see me because I don't want you to see my mess in this corner. <laughs> you might be shocked. <laughs> so what I'll do, I'll grab here, I'll grab, I'll grab a scoop of this red iron oxide. Isn't that a lovely rich colour. Alright, well that's actually going to be more than I need. I need actually 16, one pound two ounces, 16, 17, 18 ounces only. So I'm just going to carefully weigh out 18 ounces. Dee -dee. I must say, a digital balance like this is very useful. And if you can get one that weighs up to, this one actually weighs up to about 11 pounds or 12 pounds. Well, five kilos anyway. So, for this it's very easy. I never got on very well with those you know, those balances that are like that, you know, where you've got to move the thing along. I can't remember the name of them. Okay, so this is surplus. I'll put this back in the bag. Dee -dee -dee.
Of course, the thing with red iron oxide is it's like it stains everything, doesn't it? You get it on your hands and you've got to. So that's the last, that's the last ingredient. All right. Um, we're going to tick it off the list. In no uncertain terms, you see, because, yeah. I've got a bucket, nearly a full bucket of glaze over here, which is wrong. So then I've got to think to myself, well, what am I going to do with that? You know. Okay. So we've got all of the dry ingredients. We've just got to lastly put the red iron oxide here. Into the bucket. Turn off the, the balance. All right, now then, next thing we're going to do is going to get a I'm just going to get this stick here and I'm just going to give this slowly, carefully, so I don't raise the dust, you see. I'm just going to give it a dry mix, okay? Let's just, let's just bring the camera in a touch. Otherwise you might get bored looking at the same. Let's just bring it in here, you see? So you, you see the ingredients in here, and I'm just giving these a, just a gentle, and I'm bearing in mind that I'm not wearing a mask, so I'm just trying to do this a little bit, a little bit carefully, you know. Give this a dry mix. And what we're going to do to this is, it's not you haven't got to really mix it really thoroughly at this point in time. This actually, this recipe is just for half a bucket. You see, as you can see, it's not a it's not a big amount. All right, there it is. What we, what, we, what we need now, though, is um, we're going to need some we're going to need some water, aren't we? So uh, we've got a clean bucket here, have we? La, 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 la. I actually want to get as soon as the weather. You know what? Today's a good day. We've actually got running water because you know for many days. This has just been frozen up here. And be good to give this area a bit of a wash down because la la la. Okay, there's. I bought these actually. These um, I was at one of those cheap shops the other day, you know. And I bought these, uh, these, these are smaller buckets. They're actually rather handy. So we're going to take this. Now, when you pour the water in, you might get a bit of dust, okay? But just, just pour that, add that to the, I love that bub bubbly noise. Do you like that noise? Okay, so we're just going to give that just a gentle stir. The next thing with this is actually is, is to just leave it, okay? And I, as it's emitting a little bit of a little bit of a bit of dust at the moment, you know, uh, I'm going to I'm going to stand back. All right. And um, what we what we're gonna what we're gonna do now? Let's just move move the camera this way a bit so I don't have to stand there um, sniffing in the dust. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that now that those dry mixed 
ingredients along with the water. We're just going to let that slake down. That's the terminology, slake down, which just generally means let the water infuse all of the dry particles of clay. And it's good just to leave that. You can leave it overnight or you can leave it a couple of hours. Okay, but then afterwards, probably good idea if you don't have one of these it's a good idea good idea to get one having said that we never had one when I was working in the pottery for my dad <laughs> my dad didn't have such <laughs> advanced technology but an electric drill for I don't know 50 bucks and one of these for five bucks, you're going to save yourself a lot of a lot of trouble, a lot of time and energy mixing up mixing up your mixing up your glazes. Just one word here to say, and that is these. This is a metal one, and they can be a bit sharp, so they can actually damage your buckets quite nicely. <laughs> or not, ni not nicely, I should say. And um, so it's not a bad idea if you do get one of these cheap ones that you take a file and you just file it off a bit just to take off any of the rough bird edges, all right? And, but this is very useful for, you know, mixing your glaze. You have to be a bit careful that you don't go too fast because it can make a big splash otherwise, but it, it's, it's a pretty handy tool. So there we are. The next, the next thing though that I have to do, all right, the next thing that we have to do, um, now that that glaze is finished effervescing, making that dust, the next thing we have to do is, is to, when that has slaked down nicely, okay, we're going to scoop it out of here and it's got to be sieved through this sieve into the bucket. Um, this, this sieve is an 80-80 mesh, but you can use a 100 mesh. I like an 80 mesh because it goes through quicker. <laughs> And I think 80 mesh is actually probably okay. Uh, but you can use 100 mesh. Um, before you put the glaze through the sieve, don't make it too watery. You can add a bit of water as you go. So make it like a, a sort of thick, a thick cream consistency and then have a jug of water on the side and you know, as it's going through the sieve, um, just add a little bit of water. You can also um, hang on a moment. Let me just see. I'm looking for something. Can't find it. But you can use a you can use an old credit card to help push it through the sieve, or you can you can use one of these. I find these probably about the best to be quite honest. So, pour the glaze in and just, you need a bit of patience, just work the, work the, the glaze till it goes through. If it seems a bit reluctant, just add a little water, but very little, just to help it, okay? Until you've got it all through. Um, if you have if you have put too much water you won't be able to use the glaze immediately because you'll have to wait for the for the, the glaze to sediment out okay and then you what you'll need to do is scoop off a little bit of the water on the top if you if you put too much in so it's better to put too little than too much if you want to use the glaze right away so I think that's about it, isn't it? What else is there to say about mixing up the glaze? 
this is just a basic glazed recipe. I mean, you know, we have uh, like six ingredients here. So there's a, there's a few there's a few ingredients there for you. Some some glazes are are, are more simple. Um, so have a go of mixing up your own glaze. Don't be frightened of it. You know, the actual ingredients are not that expensive if you buy raw raw materials like this, like flint, felspar, whiting, etc. You know, you, you can afford to make a mistake, is what I'm saying. It's not going to break the bank if you do it wrong. And um, so have a go. And, and good luck with that, yeah. I'm going to be in, the, in uh, Tucson, Arizona at the Southern Arizona Clay Artists in conjunction with the Romero House Potters on April 13th and 14th. So if you're from that neck of the woods, uh, go to the SA, uh, CA, Southern Arizona Clay Artist website. I think you'll probably get details from there. Um, I think they may have a few spaces. So that's all, folks. Other than to say, <laughs> get stuck in and mixing up your own glaze and keep practicing. It's the only way. Bye-bye now.